get it done as quickly as we can because yeah, if anybody can, drops yeah. off, then we no longer have a quorum and then we have to stop anyway. So, uh, uh, seven o'clock even. Yeah, I call the order. We'll immediately move to approval of the consent agenda items. Does anybody have any questions about the consent agenda items? Would anybody like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda items? I move. To I'll move. Uh, we'll take holiday as the first and Marsha as the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any days? Okay, consent agenda items are approved. Comments from observers. I do not see any observers present. Comments from friends of the library. I do see Susan online. Susan, you have the floor. Hi. Um, I'll make it quick too. We the friends have been really busy getting ready for the plant sale. It's going to be mums again, you know, the fall mum sale. The prices are going to be the same, the colors will be the same which are white, yellow, red, orange, and a purplish color. Um, online sales and paper sales will start August 1st, ending August 23rd. And then the sale date is September the 7th, 10.30 to, or no, 10 o'clock till 1.30. We, uh, the, we received a donation of beautiful art books, uh, too beautiful to decline and, uh, we're going to be happy, but too too uh, too many to just hang hang on to to another sale. So we're having a pop up sale on August the third. It's a um a re retired Duquesne University professor who's made whose family has made the donation. She's still living, but the family made it on her behalf. And we're getting ready for Love Your Library, which is in September. That's um a, definitely a membership drive and the uh different board members are putting together schedules and stuff like that. And um, I show one more thing, the friends board increased its board membership by one. So now we have six board members. We've always had five, it worked really well, but we are just in a higher state of busy and we you know, just need, really needed one more person. And our new board member is Sylvia O'Donovan. And I think that covers it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your update. Anybody have any questions for Susan about friends activity? Oh, we're just doing wonderful here. <laughs> uh, we will move on to our commission liaison who I don't believe is present. She is, is not, right? and she did not share a report with me. Okay, and then we will move on to our presence report, which is me, and in the interest of moving along, I do not have one this month. It's gonna be a 15 minute minute. <laughs> That's, <laughs> oh, That's good. We will move on to the director's report. Okay, I do actually have words for Wednesday. Take your time, we are not rushing you. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is a fun thing, and I apologize to those of you who are not here to see it, but um, I have the brochure from the annual Stuffed Animal Sleepover, so I'm just going to pass that around for you to look at, because it's just fun and cute. Um, we're also having our very popular Touch of a Truck program on July 21st, so if you know any little ones or just like they own the fire trucks. You are welcome to come to the library. Uh, please introduce yourself to staff as a board member because I would like them to see you at events and know who you are. Makes me happy. Um, as far as the ACLA, ENACRA, whatever PLA I have there, um, we recently had a general membership meeting for ACLA and we voted in the e resources funding, which um, although we are paying more than we have ever paid, and you know it increases every year by a significant amount, um, we are going to have to, we're not phrasing it as reducing services, but they're reducing the number of holds that you can place at one time, and they're reducing the number of books you can have in resources at one time. They're hoping that we'll reduce the, the holds, um, the length of time people are waiting for, for items. Uh, we just, we cannot financially keep up with the demand. So um, to that end, I've been having conversations. This is something, you know, some of the librarians in this county and I have been discussing for years. So I've started to talk to the, I had a meeting with the Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh director. Last night I had dinner with the state librarian in Harrisburg 
And I'm trying to advocate for a state ebook program, much like Ohio's digital library, where um, libraries from all over the state pay into one big pot. Um, it works really well for Ohio. And I don't know if it will reduce our costs, but about 10% of the, the money we're spending, we personally are spending and the county is spending, um, goes to out of county and out of state users anyway. So if we're all contributing to something that the entire state can use, I, I just feel like that would be a better, more efficient use of the funds. And we're already doing it with electronic resources through the power libraries. So it doesn't seem like there's any reason why we can't not only advocate for, you know, contributing to a state um, ebook database, but also then seek out more funding at the state level for that resource. So I'm just putting feelers out. Hopefully, you know, everybody I've talked to thinks it's a good idea. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know if anything will happen, but at least we're trying to to do something. Like it's just this is happening all over the country. Libraries, you know, the e-resources publishers just they're not happy about providing libraries with access to these things. So they charge us way more than the regular users, and it's just really difficult to sustain. Um, ACLA has also released the first draft of their 25-27 strategic plan. They have basically just updated their action steps, so you can look at that if you want. I think it should be available on their website as well, um, but I can, I, she shared the general membership meeting, so I can send that out to everybody if you're interested in looking at it. And she also announced, Amy Anderson also announced today that our, the budget hearing, their budget hearing with RAD is going to be at the end of August. I think it's like the 25th or something at the Coffers building. So I'm planning to be down there to just support them and listen. As far as the Pennsylvania Library Association, um, Christy Buecher had this message. I am pleased to share with you that the PA Commonwealth budget passed both the House and Senate last night and was signed with Governor Shapiro. Um, additionally, the necessary distribution language for public library funds to be distributed was signed. So the numbers are funded at flat level, same amount as last year, which was not is not ideal. Um, the state library got a small increase of like $180,000. Everybody else is flat. And the but the big takeaway is that the budget was actually passed and we didn't have to wait five months for our funding so uh, she just says um i'd like to thank those of you who support the advocacy work by reaching out to your own state level elected officials and repeat our message it's all of us working on these important tasks to make progress and i know um many of you reached out and and made those calls and made those asks so we appreciate that very much that um, in addition to the printed report, I do want to apologize that the May report took so long to get to you. It is in the packets over there on the table. I uploaded it to Govenda this morning, and I also emailed it out to everyone. So you should have it. Um, that was the only piece we were just waiting on the Children's Library to get to us. So um, that's all complete now. Any questions? Yeah. What was that last thing? The main budget? Was it was the main director's main report. Record. So yeah, just the list of programming and everything like that. The library, the children's library is deep into summer reading and they remembered to do June, forgot to do May, and then the person that puts it together went away for the weekend. So it just didn't get to me in time to share with you until this morning. Do um we model our like overall mission statement at all off of the ACLA one, or is it just two completely separate things? We created ours in 2021 from with, scratch, or from scratch with the help of a consultant. Okay. So yes, um, we we kind of did it on our own. Okay. But I mean, they're all pretty similar. Okay. Any questions for Robin? Okay. Thank you, Robin. Um, 
committee reports, governance committee stuff is getting moved to old business. So we'll talk about that in the middle in a minute. Uh, I see fundraising committee 2024 garden tour recap. Yeah, I just have numbers. I do, and I don't have any information for me. I just have numbers. Yeah, so the total garden tour revenue, this is gross, not net, because we don't take out like, um, you know, staff costs and that kind of thing, $18,828. So this is um, better than anything since COVID obviously has happened, but it's quite a bit lower than 2019 and previous years. And that's just, I think, I don't think that's um, unusual. Wait, so it's, it's up from last year, though? Yes. Oh no, actually it's a little tough. <laughs> it's about the same. Okay. Within within a, several hundred dollars of last year. Okay. Um but yeah, it's uh the the thing that's hardest for us to do is to get the um the the brochures with the ads, the ad sales are just way down. And I don't know that they're ever going to recover. Like in 2016, we sold ten thousand dollars worth of ads, and this year we sold thirty eight hundred. So I can tell you, I'm not on that board anymore. But it's softball, so I kind of see similar struggles with those going. Right. I think yeah. it's I think it's every nonprofit. You know, there there are so many like that could be a whole conversation in itself. All the struggles that nonprofits and service groups are having with getting volunteers and getting funding, and everybody wants to attend things, but nobody's like making things happen so it, it's left to a few people to try to to cobble all this stuff together and um it, it it can get really difficult sometimes so i think we just need to start thinking differently about how money is raised okay we can move on from that then that's all i had okay. um, i overall i think it was a wonderful day the rain held off Kristen had a great time. <laughs> well, that's all that really matters. Everybody yeah. seemed to have fun. The garden tour attendees are always just a really relaxed, mm -hmm. fun group of people that are just having fun spying on other people's gardens. So yeah. it's great. <laughs> One of these years, I swear I'm going to volunteer, but uh, I was at PNC Park this year. <laughs> so it wasn't this year, but I'm glad to hear it went well. Um, okay, moving on to Old Business Governance Committee and our policy updates. So at our last meeting, we shared with everyone the was it four, four, five, four, 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 four policies that yes. are up for vote. And I put them in the documents folder. I changed, I after we made the final, final updates, I marked them all final in the documents folder under May 20, policy updates, 2024, May so you'll find them there. So um, the changes were pretty minor from from what you saw in May. Yeah, there's only the one I want to point out, and I just have to find it somewhere. It's both. I did notice right. when I was collating that on so, the top of one, the title was missing. So I'm just going to add that in before I. So based on what we showed everyone last month, um, Holiday and Suzanne had sent me emails with asking some questions, pointing out some typos, making some small recommendations, asking for clarification. That resulted in some minor changes throughout the documents. The only really one that I would consider major from what we presented last month or two months ago was in the two policies where there is a challenge from a patron involved. So that would be the program policy and I believe the display policy, is that, is that the, the display policy? We did expand the language a little bit on how, basically what it says is, let me find it here so I'm sure I'm telling you the right thing. I know we switched one sentence, like the last two sentences. Well, we added. And just to clarify. Basically we made it clear that if, the actual line in the thing, what it says right now is the director will then provide a written response to the patron. This is if someone challenges a display or challenges a program. Um, if the patron indicates to the library director that they are not satisfied at this level, the library board of trustees will convene a review committee, including the director, at least two board members, and blah, blah, blah. 
that sentence was drastically expanded from your first draft because it wasn't quite clear of how a challenge or a who uh, they should indicate yeah, to or it didn't really indicate how they should go about filing a what's the word I'm looking for not a petition like asking it to take it to the next level right a protest a protest doesn't seem right really. <laughs> but um so basically we expanded that to say they can let the director know that they're not satisfied with the result and they request a hearing with the library board. So that language has been made a little bit clearer based on some comments that Suzanne had. Um, Holiday, so you're happy with all everything how you were yeah. addressed. Did anyone else who did not email me, does anyone have any questions about what is being presented here now or any concerns about what's being presented here now? I would like to mention that these have been submitted to Phil Weiss, so any motion to approve will be pending legal review. I don't anticipate that he's going to have any comments really because we didn't change anything major, um, but I will, I will wait to hear from him before I post these changes to the website. They will still be dated today though. And again, just to be clear, this is largely what was presented two months ago with some slight language changes and a little, not severe, but a little more extensive language change when indicating that if a person wants to challenge a ruling by Robin and, his, and her staff, she just needs to indicate that to Robin, who then brings it to the board, in which case we conduct a hearing. That was the only significant change that came through from Suzanne and Holiday's notes, really. Um, other than that, any questions or concerns? Nope. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll move. Marsha moves to accept the new policies as presented today. Do I have a second? I'll second. Holiday seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Robin will be happy to know those four policies are approved again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I will. Um, Wait till I hear from Phil before asking Jeremy to post them to our website, but they will have today's date. So essentially, they're effective immediately, which leads us to our next. Um, okay, so that takes new care business. Of old business. We can move on to new business, and Robin has some things to show to us. Um, not really to show right. you. So the self checks upstairs. Um, the company we work with currently is called Biblioteca. When we purchased those um, self-checks 10 plus years ago, Cindy and her staff at the time purchased them. Jeremy was here, but it was before Sharon and I came on board. Um, it was a company called 3M that they purchased from. Biblioteca bought out 3M. So they're keeping these going, but they are phasing out the 3M products because they want everybody to have their, you know, the Biblioteca um, machines. Um, so they've basically kept them going about as long as they can. So we're in the market to replace new ones. And Jeremy, you know, he said, I could drag this out another year or two, but right now we have this extra funding because Rad has paid for our computers for the next three years. So this is a good time for us while we have the funds to get these new um, self-checks. So he is an incredible negotiator and he worked out a very good deal with um, Biblioteca. Basically, from what I understand, we're paying about what we paid 10 years ago for the same machines. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, because of, because our budget is January to December, and he has an extra $20,000 or so with Rad paying for our computers, um, we're going, the plan is to, um, they're going to deliver all of the all of these, I believe, before the end of the year. But we will pay for half of it out of this year's budget and half out of next year's budget. So they'll bill us um, half this year and half in 2025 um, if we are able to do this. So um, yeah, the the fiscal authority policy we updated to unbudgeted projects, purchases or projects totaling 2,500 or more must be approved by the board. So this is that. Um, I think it's a very good deal. Jeremy did a great job. 
The other thing that Biblioteca, because we have so many of their products and such as the lockers, we have the, um, the gates, the self-checks, so many things. Um, they want us to be they like, I think they called it a showcase library or something. So I think they're working with us. I don't know if it actually equates to like, you know, you get a 10% discount on the top or anything like that. I don't think it's anything like that, but they're very um, amenable to Jeremy's suggestions, I guess is, is the best way to put it. Uh, we're very good customers, in other words. That's great. Yeah. So that's that's basically where we're at. We're going, we need to replace our four self-checkouts upstairs. How many is it? Four. And what's the cost? The total is $39,570.24. Robin, Robin, yes. how much do they get? How much do they get used? Constantly. Yeah, they're very the children's library there every time i'm over there there's somebody at the the self checks and the the ones on the other side are used a lot as well especially during busy times people don't want to wait in line um or they just don't want to talk to anybody they want to come in and you know just grab their stuff and go as long as they don't have holds behind the circ desk they don't have to talk to anyone they can just come in check out books and <laughs> do their thing so And you, this doesn't affect anything else in the budget. You said this is extra money uh, on earmarks for anything. It's, yeah, he's got these extra funds. Um, there will be, you know, the service costs. There's there's always a service fee um, annually, but we're already paying one on the current machines, and it's not much. And it sounds like we trust this brand that we like. This is where we buy a lot of okay. equipment. We do, and honestly, we don't have a whole lot of options okay so you know jeremy gets quotes from other organizations but usually and they're not competitive and if they are competitive biblioteca always matches because they want to keep our business and if we put in these new machines now how long do they expect it to last like how long did the last ones last well it's been i've been here almost nine years and they were here before me okay. so they've you know that okay. was a different company though so We've never had a biblioteca self check, but we've had absolutely no issues with the current ones, and they've uh, they have had to help us. They're we've had to use our service contract on the automated materials handler before it was replaced, um, and they were always really responsive as far as getting that fixed. And that was a 3M product, so they were they're really good about you know service calls and that kind of thing, but. Marsha, you're our finance committee. Any concerns or questions? I do not have any concerns. I'm not surprised that they lasted that long, though, because, um, or that the price is about the same as it was 10 years ago, simply because technology has gotten cheaper as time goes on. So yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm good with it. I think that that makes a lot of sense. This actually gives us a little more uh, flexibility also because um, this price includes uh, stands for them. Right now we have them on countertops, but when we do the renovation kind of project upstairs, we will have the option to get rid of those those big so countertops we, we, and just put them on pre-standing. We have place. four now and we're replacing them with four. Same yes. Right. yes. Um, other board members, any concerns or questions? Right. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase. Second. All favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any nays? You got your self check out. Thank you very much. Okay, so the last thing is the um, service level narrative. It's the last page in your board packet. This is something we have to do every year. Um, I don't know if technically it has to be approved, but we've always approved it since I've been here, so I figured why not, right? Um, this is just what goes in the manager's recommended budget, and it's the uh, levels at which the library seeks funding. So we're it's called a zero-based budgeting system, and Marcia can describe it better than me, but basically you start at zero and there are different levels based on the level of services that you can provide for a certain amount of money. 
we are always, I, I shouldn't say always, we have traditionally been funded at the standard appropriation level, which is three. Occasionally they'll go up above like one year. I requested um, two of my part-time librarians be, or staff members be made full-time. Keith did not recommend that level, but we were able to convince the commissioners to, pro to provide the funding for that level. So it's, it's kind of an interesting process. They don't have, we don't have numbers yet because finance still is working on getting costs for wages and salaries. It's a primary <coughs> cost. So finding out insurance costs for next year and that kind of thing. So we don't have any numbers. We're just approving the narrative language, which I need to get into um, finance by the end of next week. So who uses this? Who sees this? Like Keith. Everyone. Yeah, okay. it's this is so it, it's is it, it's in the bound is book it directly published. directly tied into the budget or separate from this is the budget. It's, it, okay, this is the budget. It makes it this becomes the, the this these descriptions become the budget document. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this okay. is uh pretty much the same. It's kind of an amalgam of previous years before COVID. Um when we switched to COVID, we kind of like the first one was virtual programming or only our virtual library. And then we kind of based it on what we were able to do it with COVID with the, the funding at that point. Uh, we've kind of switched back now to just the what it was like previously. So, so because we're the finance committee, Marsha and I got a bit of an early look at this and discussed it a little bit through email and ultimately you were okay with it, correct, Marsha? Yes. Does any other board members have any questions or concerns? What are you okay with? This wording here? Is that all of it? Oh, the whole thing. All of it. Even yeah, even the, the service oh, levels. I see. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So basically this is what we're going to ask for. And then in August, Marsha and um the finance committee or the Finance department and I will put numbers to it. Okay. Uh, so you're asking for all four levels. Is that we that we always ask? Right. Yeah. The e resources appropriation we won't get, but I've been putting it in there to emphasize the importance. So let you know, let's say you go, let's say you do want to add another, completely add a whole new staff member. That needs changed in this first. When, like for next year's budget or whatever, is that how that works? Yeah, or? we have we have very little say over staffing levels. Okay. So if I wanted, if I needed a new staff member, I would put number five additional children's librarian, okay. and then I would put a little paragraph <laughs> justifying. And then when we go okay. in November to the budget hearing, I would say this is why I need it, and you know, so, here's some so, information about so it. So this, uh, is, so basically, this document explains what's going to be asked for in the next round of budget. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. Okay. And every department, every part of the municipality has to do this. Uh, some of the kind of, um, I don't want to say hangers on because that doesn't sound nice and that's not what I mean, okay. but like the historical society and outreach, they have little ones like there's their portion of municipal funding is much smaller, okay. but there are similar things for every single department. So Keith goes through and makes his recommendations based on the money he has and trying to, you know, put a little bit in everybody's okay. pot. And then the commissioners read through it all, talk to everyone um, in the budget hearings and work out the details of, you know, will we really like to see this happen? What can, what do we need to do to make it happen? And Okay, so, so Marshall's good with this and you're good with this too, heading into the next question. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. We'll give that one to Marsha. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. I would like you to poke your head in next door because Eric, our librarian, is doing his Shakespeare night. Pursued by a bear as we close the series, and he's dressed as Julius Caesar. So you got to see him in his two. <laughs> Before our, is the I don't have the agenda up. Is is on a, I'm on a different machine. Um, 
Before we adjourn, I just have one thing to comment on. Is that now? Um, I just want to commend the circulation desk for being um, observant. I returned a book the other day with my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite bookmark in it. And I realized it about two hours later and I called the library. And not only had they found it, they thought it was so unusual, they had passed it around. But when I went back later that day, it was sitting happily at the circulation desk with my name on it. Oh, that's nice. That's I thought nice. it was nice. The fact that they noticed and took care of it for me. We actually have a very popular Facebook series called Things We Find in Books yeah. where we take I things know. That, so, they told me about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I love hearing good things about my staff and I will pass it on to them. They will be very <laughs> pleased to hear good things from a board member. It means a lot to us. That is a lovely story to end this meeting on. I promise, the, I know we all like the advocacy moment. I promise it will remember to return in September. Otherwise, thank you all for bearing with me and my schedule and moving quickly tonight. I appreciate it. We'll come back and stay for like three hours in September. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. Thank, thank you all. You all. So thank and you. Susan, I hope you're feeling better. Thank you, I'm coming along. Every day's a good day. I'm so glad. Or a better day. A better day, yes. Well, if you need anything, let me know. I will. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.